I'm not above saying movies are also great. <laughs> I, I get that there's a difference between books and movies, but I am all for this movie. Welcome to Book Therapy. I'm your host, Kim Patton. There's no way to count how many books are floating around in this world. Some are decent, some are truly terrible, and some are great. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into one great book. Together, we will discover gems of truth and encouragement to help you face your current season of life. I'm ready. You're ready. Let's get this party started. Hello, hello, friends. Thank you for joining me here today. I am kicking off a two-part series. I really think that you're going to enjoy it. As always, if this episode makes you smile, makes you laugh, makes you think, makes you cry, I mean, I hope it doesn't make you cry, but that could be good also please share it and leave a review. I really, really appreciate your support. Let's dive into the book. Today's book is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. It was published in 2005 and it has over 2 million ratings on Goodreads, mostly, obviously, four and five stars. It is well-loved. It is one of my favorite fiction books of all time, definitely my favorite historical fiction book. It's set during the war, The Book Thief will kick off our two-part series on fathers and daughters. Why that theme for this book? The book alone is incredible. There are amazing characters. The plot is action-packed. The narrator is very unique. We'll find out who that is in a minute. The main character to me is really special. I think she personifies um, just an innocent bystander during the war and also one who has undergone immense suffering. So it's really easy to sympathize with her, and it's really easy to be drawn into her story. But I think the author does a fantastic job using creative expression throughout the book. He has a little bit of drawings in there. He has these kind of interruptions that just pops you out of the story for a minute, um, not in a bad way, in a way that gives you more information without... It kind of feels like he's giving you insider information, and that's just a really fun reading experience. It's also very sad. It has a lot of drama to it. I mean, it's set during the war, so the setting alone and the place is its own character, and the ending is, you know, it's sad. There's there's just a lot that goes on in this book that is heartbreaking, but the author knows what he's doing, and in the end, you just really feel like you were a part of something incredible and beautiful and redemptive, but also mirroring our history in this world. I chose to focus on the relationship between the father and the daughter because it's it was my favorite part of the book, and I think a lot of other people will relate and will enjoy it. Who is the main character, Liesl, and who is Hans, her foster father, and who is the narrator? These are the things that will lay the groundwork for the book. Liesl is 10 years old, She doesn't have a father in the picture, and her mother was transporting her and her brother to a foster family in Germany because she was no longer able to care for them. But on the way, something terrible happens, and Liesl shows up at the foster home by herself and is introduced to Hans and his wife, Rosa, and that's where the story begins. The narrator, we learn, is death. I know that sounds weird. How does death narrate a book? Well, it's really cool. It's a little bit creepy at the beginning, and he doesn't even outright say that he's death. (laughs) Um, But death is a huge part of this book. He's peering on from above or from around the story, and he's shedding light on Liesl and her story because it was interesting to him. I know, it's weird, right? Just so you get an idea of how death narrates this book, he is talking on page 174 about the war, and there's a little interruption that says, a small but noteworthy note. I've seen many young men who over the years think they're running at other young men. They are not. They're running at me. Okay, so that's a little bit creepy. And then also on page 307, he has another little interruption that tells you a bit about himself. It says, a small piece of truth. 
I do not carry a sickle. I only wear a hooded black robe when it's cold. And I don't have those skull-like facial features you seem to enjoy pinning on me from a distance. You want to know what I truly look like? I'll help you out. Find yourself a mirror while I continue. I mean, I'm smiling, but it's just so weird that he has this way with words that can draw you into a story and totally creep you out at the same time. So death is the narrator of this story, and it's his perspective that we see. And because it's set in war time, it makes a lot of sense because unfortunately death is a huge part of this book and this story in history. We are going to focus on Hans. We're going to talk about him and his relationship with Liesel. So we need to get to know him. First of all, Hans is quiet and kind. He is married to Rosa and she's not quiet and kind. (laughs) She is abrasive. She is bossy. She's really mean. She's verbally abusive, first of all. And compared to Hans, she's the heavy hand in the relationship. Hans is quieter. He's more compassionate. He's a little bit low-key and not so overwhelming. We see this right at the beginning when he meets Liesel and she's having a tough time. Obviously, she's just been torn away from the only home she's ever known and her family and forced into this family. And Rosa was not super nice in the beginning, um, which made Hans all the more welcoming to her. On page 33, it says, Some facts about Hans. He loved to smoke. The main thing he enjoyed about smoking was the rolling. He was a painter by trade and played the piano accordion. This came in handy, especially in winter, when he could make a little money playing in the pubs. He had already cheated me in one world war, but would later be put into another. Our first act of compassion that we really dive into is when Hans discovers that Liesel has stolen a book from a grave digger. She doesn't steal it from a grave digger, per se. It was on the ground in the snow, and she happened to pick it up and shove it under her coat. And when Hans realizes this, she admits that she can't read. On page 64, a 2 a.m. conversation. Is this yours? Yes, Papa. Do you want to read it? Again, yes, Papa. A tired smile, metallic eyes melting. Well, we'd better read it then. They go on to start with the alphabet. And Hans teaches Liesel to read. Secondly, we see that Hans is brave and bold and stubbornly just. On page 104, it is mentioned that Hans does not join the Nazi party. And throughout the book, it becomes a problem um, in a place where it's expected of him. He is often looked down upon by other people. He is denied business. And he's mistreated because he has chosen not to sign up with the Nazi party. The cool thing about that is he has his reasons. He has his personal reasons. They tie back to the first war that he was in and how he had a relationship with someone who was a Jew. And he had a hard time honoring his friend's memory by going with the political force of the time. So he chose not to go with what everyone was doing and he chose to stand up for what he thought was right which was that the jewish people should not be mistreated the way that they were being mistreated he has a real heart for people whether it's the people in his home or his neighbors or his clients that he works with or even strangers we see on page 204 that he risks his life for strangers He, at one point, had to make it very clear to Liesel that she was not to talk about something, a secret that they were holding in their family. And it says, The girl began to sob so uncontrollably that Papa was dying to pull her into him and hug her tight. He didn't. Instead, he squatted down and watched her directly in the eyes. He unleashed his quietest words so far. Do you understand me? Because a life was on the line, he had to be so direct with her and so firm that she was almost scared to reveal the secret to anybody, even her best friend, because it was that important. It was a life or death situation, and so he had to lovingly get the message across. Third, Hans inspires those he loves. In one situation, Hans realizes that someone does something that he doesn't necessarily approve of 
and it could be rather dangerous, but he lets his guard down and without anger or reproach, he talks to this person about what they've experienced. And in that moment, it makes that other person feel human and feel seen. Hans appreciated the vulnerability and appreciated where the person was coming from and lowered his expectations to say, okay, yeah, I see why you did that. I understand. Tell me more. There are a few places in the book where Hans stands up for what is right and things don't always go well. Um, There's especially a situation where he regrets his decision. He feels like In the moment, he maybe did something that was too brave and too bold, and he was going to pay for it, and it made him regret it. But when Liesl spoke with him, she says, no, Papa, you're not an idiot. You're just a man. And she comforted him, knowing that he did the right thing, but it could be very costly. And he was in agony, just wondering when he was going to be arrested, when they were going to come take him away. And Lisa saw his fear, but she saw past that fear. And it's obvious that she admired him for the choice he made because it did take great strength and courage, even though it might also cost him everything. There's a great theme in this book with the accordion. Hans plays the accordion. And I forgot to mention that there's also a movie the Book Thief, and it's wonderful. I own it. I've seen it several times, and I love watching what they did with the with Liesl and her dad. It just made me appreciate the book all the more. In the movie, I can just picture his smile as he's, you know, sitting around the table, and he's playing the accordion, and Rosa's, you know, cleaning the kitchen or not smiling because she rarely smiles. And Liesl's just sitting there enjoying it and also just kind of falling in love with this new foster father that she didn't choose, but he creates this special connection with her and, you know, he winks at her and just makes her feel at home. So this accordion and his love for music does come up often in the book and it's a really beautiful connection with people. He's connecting with his family and the accordion is from his past in which he had connected with people. He also encourages Liesl um, when they are in the bomb shelters during certain times, she begins to tell stories and read, and that helps calm everybody down, especially the children. So when Hans has to go away for a little while, he looks back at Liesl and he says, if there are more raids, keep reading. And Liesl understands that she's inspiring others And he encourages that. He sees that she's bringing hope to a hopeless time. And he wants her to know how precious that is. The accordion comes up again with Rosa. And say what you will about Rosa, but often underneath hardened people, there is a soft middle. And Rosa is a tough cookie. But there's one scene in particular which is hilarious and she's pretending to be really mean and ugly in front of other people, but really she's kind of passing a secret message to Liesl. And so Liesl doesn't mind, you know, even being slapped on the face just because she's so excited about this secret and Rosa's pretending, (laughs) but everybody knows how mean Rosa is, so they don't think anything of it. And so the secret is safe. But also when Hans is away, Liesl sneaks out of her room and she sees Rosa pick up the accordion and she sees her cry and she sees her devastated and the accordion maybe annoys her (laughs) often. Maybe she yells at her husband to stop playing that thing and go do something else or get out of her kitchen or whatever. But when he's not there... She is drawn to it, and she misses him, and Liesl misses him. Rosa is a difficult person, but she is full of love, and she does serve her family out of love and sacrifice. And I appreciated seeing that side of her, especially with just such a beautiful visual of her tenderly holding the accordion and thinking about the one that she loves. On page 527, it says... Papa sat with me tonight. He brought the accordion down and sat close. 
I often look at his fingers and face when he plays. The accordion breathes. There are lines on his cheeks. They look drawn on, and for some reason when I see them I want to cry. It is not for any sadness or pride. I just like the way they move and change. Sometimes I think my papa is an accordion. When he looks at me and smiles and breathes, I hear the notes. In conclusion, Hans and Liesel have a unique and challenging relationship. It's born out of hardship, but his character is shown throughout the whole book, and her her personality is a little bit feisty, and he sees that, and he's drawn to it, and he helps nurture her and kind of point her in the right direction. Rosa is also there, and she's the one who's the tougher one, but Hans is a soft place for Liesl to land. And reading their story and reading the whole book is so inspiring. It just shows the most important things in life. The connection over musical instruments. The relationships that thrive even when there's poverty. The chance to stand up and do something right when everyone else around you is encouraging you to do something you don't believe in. The book is filled with gems. It is a long book, and I can see how it can be intimidating. And I have talked to people who couldn't quite get into it at the beginning because the style is a little bit different and because the narrator is death and he doesn't come right out and say that. It can be a little confusing. But if you want to take it on, I encourage you to read it when you have the time or listen to it on audio or watch the movie because I'm not above saying movies are also great. <laughs> I, I get that there's a difference between books and movies, but I am all for this movie. It's a beautiful story, and I appreciate that the author took the time to write it because it's one that will stay with me forever. Thank you for listening to another episode of Book Therapy. Today we talked about the theme of fathers and daughters with The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Next time we will be talking about another book with a special father and daughter theme. So join me again. I chose the relationship between the foster father and the main character because it's just my favorite. <laughs> Sorry, there's no way else to put it. And I think a lot of other people will... will, will will relate and will enjoy it. <laughs>